sticking with the economy and this inflation rate. Let's bring in independent economist Warren Hogan, a consultant with the small business lender Judo Bank. Warren, always good to chat to you. I just want to go to this issue of where inflation sits right now. The Reserve Bank says, look, we're prepared to wait a couple of years and let it you know, drift lower over time. But the reality is there's evidence now, even from today's release, that there is inflation in our system that's sticky, that's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, well, the story is now domestically generated services inflation. The original shock from the pandemic was all about goods, manufacturing, transport, logistics. All of that was creating what we can now say is that peak in inflation. Now that's coming off. And what's been left behind is a domestic inflation dynamic driven by domestic cost pressures. And, of course, they're still going up as of Q1. Um, and that's not going to go away quickly. So we're looking at this here. And, again, this is the key out of today's statement. And that is you can see goods excluding volatile items. And they're starting to come off, which is kind of what you'd expect if oil prices come off, if you get supply chain things improving, so car prices come off. But the other one, that's the one you're referring to, services excluding volatile items. So what's in that? That is the domestic inflation. What is the biggest cost base or biggest part of the domestic cost base? Labor. So that's why we're always, as economists, worried about where wages are going. They're going only one way. That is wages gross picking up. But we've also got a domestic energy story. That will affect services prices. And, of course, another part of this story is the housing market, the rental market. Rents are only going one way. Hit a new high in Q1, but the ABS is measuring all rents at about 5% annual growth. We know advertised rents are more like 15% in many markets around Australia. So that's going to keep creeping up. So all of those domestic pressures are there. Now, they might not mean pressure, uh, inflation, domestic inflation goes any higher. Yes. But the question now is how quickly does inflation come down and when does it get to the RBA's 2 to 3%? And then on top of that, you've got electricity prices up over the past year by 15.5% mm. and expected to continue to rise at least for the next two, maybe three years. Mm. Well, we've got to definitely know on 1 July there's going to be an increase in electricity prices. That's already been announced, 20-odd percent. That's going to filter through all costs within the economy. Um, so, yeah, th these, these price pressures are going to be prominent all through this year. And, of course, we're very uncertain about next year. But this is why we have to continue to take demand out of the economy, especially labour demand. It's too strong. Unemployment rate is unsustainably low. We've got the new arrangements from the review. Yeah. Full employment is the target. 3.5%, our current unemployment rate, is not full employment. Full employment is four or four and a quarter. So. so the other thing that also strikes me is that you've got right now, let's say, the underlying inflation rate at 6.6%, the cash rate at 3.6%. But if the United States raises interest rates as expected, you know, in this next month, it's going to have a situation where both its inflation rate and its cash rate are going to be in the fives. They're going to be coming pretty close to each other. Mm. Australia's a long way from that. We are a long way from it. I think these numbers, my reading, uh, particularly of the core inflation in the quarter, which is 1.2%, that's probably a good, as good a guess as any to what we're going to settle down to as inflation comes down. So mm. let's say we get down to 45 5 5 inflation. That's not 2 to 3%. It's certainly not 2 to 3%. The RBA is happy to do that over the next two years, but let's just talk about this year. End of 23, 4.5% to 5%. That's our best guess. Now, if the RBA cash rate's where it is now, that's still a deeply negative real interest rate because it's at 3.6%. And as you said, the Federal Reserve and most central banks want to get that real interest rate back up to zero from negative two, negative three, or in Australia's case, it got to negative four, to zero. So if we get inflation coming down to four and a half, five, that tells you for the RBA by the end of the year to get the Cash, the real cash rate to zero, they need to do a couple more rate hikes. OK, so this is the argument. So Philip Lowe says quite openly, if there is any sign of inflation spiking or being persistent, I will go again. I will raise interest rates again. But the action says, no, now we're going to sit and have a little bit of a look at it. How long can the Reserve Bank sit and have a bit of a look at these types of conditions without it becoming a problem for Australia's economy, that, in other words, that cliff, the, the narrow path they talk about, becomes even narrower for them? Well, what they don't want to do is get to a situation where the economy gets away from them and they have to jack up rates by one or two percentage points. And Which then that, tips us over into recession. Well, that, we can guarantee a recession on that. So yeah. that's the thing we've got to avoid. And the question now is, what is the level of the cash rate 
before you can have a genuine pause. And I don't think the pause last month was a genuine pause. I'm talking about the ability to sit back for six months, and that's where I think the Fed had got to, around a zero real interest rate, i.e. a 5% fund, Fed funds rate. And that's why I think for the RBA, it's going to be a 4 to 4.5% cash rate before they can be genuinely comfortable to sit back. So here's the interesting thing. You look at this, though. The markets right now are saying that there's only a 17% chance, that's as of before this decision, or this uh, inflation number came down today, 17% chance of a rate rise in May next week. Uh, but if you think about that, that's an 83% chance of no rate movement. Yep. Markets didn't move that much off the back of these today. A little bit of a move lower in yeah. the percentage. I think the market's going to be putting a 1 in 10 chance on it. The market's looking for an extended pause. Money markets are all looking for rate cuts at some stage, and I think this is a function of buying of, of bonds. Uh, and I think this is... I think the RBA would be careful to be focusing too much on that. It's going to be interesting. Warren Hogan, always good to have you in the program. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross.